So in this video, I'm going to show how I built this hoop house from scratch. It's eight feet wide by 12 feet long by seven feet tall, and it has roll up sides. And I've pretty much built all of this from materials found in Home Depot in the plumbing aisle and in the lumber aisle. So here I'm just doing some kind of simple modular framing for the hoop house. I put this together right outside of the workshop area in pieces so that way I can just carry these pieces right out to the area where the hoop house is going to go. Okay so I brought these framing pieces out to the well area and just kind of arranged them roughly where I'd like them to go. Okay, so I've got the first end wall and two pieces of the side walls. So here I've just finished putting together the frame. It went together real quick and easy since I had pretty much pre-built most of it. So I've just cut a bunch of these one foot long two by fours with 45 degree angles at the end. And I'm just putting these screws at the end of them and just kind of put them up like this so that I can give some good angle bracing just to give it some extra stability and support. All right, so now that I've got these side brackets on, I'm doing these little top brackets. I'm doing them a little bit smaller so that they don't take up as much interior square footage space. So now I'm adding these pieces of rebar to the corners first. So I have four foot pieces of rebars on each of the corners and on the sides I'm going to have two foot pieces of rebar. And that's going to be what the hoops uh, attach to. The PVC will slide right over it. So I've just added the first hoop and each one of these pieces of half inch PVC pipe is 108 inches long. You can see I put Gorilla Tape, white Gorilla Tape on the top to protect it from ultraviolet degradation. I have a 45 degree uh, elbow right there. So the peak from here to the ground is seven feet, seven feet tall. So here's another in progress shot just to show how I'm putting these PVC hoops in. So I just put the PVC pipe in. I have these half inch tube straps, one right there, one at the bottom. And underneath it, there's the rebar, which goes in the ground. That's another piece of rebar. Each one of these pieces of rebar are two feet, except at the corner, they're four feet, because I just wanted to make them longer and more defined for the corners. So I'd say it's about maybe eight inches up off the ground. Yeah, like maybe eight or nine inches up out of the ground and then the rest of it is underground. So I just kind of uh, loosely put these tube straps in so that way I can slide the PVC pipe in, slide it over the rebar and it'll just stick up in the air like that. And then I just kind of grab one end, walk it over to the other end. And then I attach the, uh, the 45 degree elbow. All right, so all the hoops are finished. So this is all I'm gonna do for today. Uh, one other thing, one other little finishing touch I did is I added some of these tube straps to the top here at each one of these corners to give it some good strength. So I've just added these little strips of wood in between the hoops, just so that it gives a nice kind of a flat surface right here for when I'm attaching the plastic. So I just added these three horizontal uh, pipes right here just to give it some extra rigidity. I just attached it with Gorilla Tape. Originally I was going to use nuts and bolts, but I actually didn't have the right size for it. So I figured this will work for now. If it doesn't work, I could always get some nuts and bolts later on and put them on. So I just added these angled boards to both of the end walls just to give it a little bit more rigidity. And I also changed a little bit. Um, I moved this to the edge. It used to be like right there and I moved it right there. So it's kind of all in line with itself so that this plane kind of just wraps around here. Cause otherwise if the way it was before like that, when I put the plastic on the plastic would kind of like go around this corner and then go to here. But instead I want it to just be flat and then go like that. So I just had to kind of bend this um, uh, pipe clamp so that this would be straight here. Because before it was the same on both sides. See how it's like an angle right there? It used to be like that on both sides. So I just bent it straight for here. 
and for the bottom. And I just did that for the end wall pieces on both sides, on the front and the back. Here's this giant roll of greenhouse plastic. It's 28 feet wide by 100 feet long. So I'm only gonna need a small fraction of this whole thing. And the thickness is six mil thick. It's not six millimeters, six mil. Since these hoops here are half an inch in, uh, in diameter, these uh, three quarter inch PVC pipes cut in this certain way, almost cut in half, can be used as clamps to kind of just attach onto them like that. And that makes it very easy to attach these, uh, this piece of greenhouse plastic in this method here. I just stretch it over it and apply the, the snap clamp, I call them, onto them. So I have one here, one here. I'm gonna have some at the bottom here and that'll kind of hold it in place. So here I've kind of trimmed off the edges a little bit. I'm leaving them kind of wider than, need, than they need to be because it's easier to trim them down if they're too long than it is to add more if they're too short. So here I have uh, one of these little PVC clamps here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I'm gonna have thin strips of wood, like one by two strips of wood to kind of come in here on top of the plastic attached to the interior frame and also along the bottom. So here's how I'm making these PVC snap clamps. So these are three quarter inch PVC pipes. And this is an example piece of a half inch PVC pipe, which the main hoops are made out of. So I basically just cut them into this shape and use these snips to cut them kind of like that, almost in half, but not in, quite in half, until basically the way I like to test them out to make sure they're good. So if they snap over like that, then I know they'll work on the hoop house as well. So I'm just gonna do that to all of these pieces. So here I've just added this one by two board. I just screwed it in along the bottom of the outside of the back wall to kind of help hold this plastic in place. Okay, here's the back wall with its finished one by two boards going along the entire bottom, up the sides, up the top, and then back down on the bottom again. And later on, I'm gonna turn this opening here into a window that can open up and close, and I'll line the edges with these same one by twos. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it as is for now. So here I've just finished adding the plastic to the front of the hoop house and I cut a little hole for the door, just kind of a rough opening, which I'll frame in later. So I just finished dragging the big piece of plastic over the top of the hoop house. I thought it would be more difficult, but since it's not a windy day, it was actually pretty easy. So I'm using these uh, three quarter inch pipe clamps to attach the greenhouse plastic on top. So I just put one right up here and I kind of pull the plastic tight as I attach another one here and then pull it tight and attach another one here, and I'll do the same on the other side. Okay, so I just added all of the clamps to the edges on both sides. So here's for the first time what it looks like on the inside, all enclosed. It actually looks like a real hoop house now. So I just trimmed down the edges so it looks a little bit more tidy. I'll trim it down more later on, but this is just enough so that it isn't doesn't have too much excess in the way while I'm working. Another important point too is that there is a specific inside and outside for the plastic. You can see if it focuses, you can see the text says inside here. I think that's because of condensation issues. Like if I f were to flip it around, it would get more condensation forming on the inside, but this way there will be less condensation. And of course, having condensation will reduce the amount of sunlight. So you can see on the outside, the text that says inside is backwards. So that's the way it should be. So here I'll just show how I actually attach this wood onto here. So I like to hold this down tight by putting my knee down right there. So you can see this is holding it down nice and tight. So that way I can come through with the drill gun and attach it like that. 
So I've attached the plastic except for everything below here. I've left this all open. And the reason is because I want to make it so that the sides can roll up for ventilation. So they'll be able to roll up like that and air can flow through, especially in the summer where it'll get extremely hot in here. So the way I'm doing that is with this PVC pipe, I'm gonna attach the plastic to the end and then it'll roll up and roll its way up to the top here. So here I've just added Gorilla Tape to attach the PVC to the greenhouse plastic and I'm rolling it up like in that way because if I did it the other way then water would accumulate as it pours down it would accumulate in this spot. So here's what it looks like with the side walls rolled up and the way I'm keeping them steady or the way I'm keeping them up is I have this little baby uh, bungee cord which is attached to a screw on the other side and I just loop it around here and then loop it around this on the other side. It's kind of hard to do just one-handed not being able to see but yeah that's how it goes on. And here's what it looks like on the inside and that's how it's staying upright. So now I'm just trimming these end pieces down Really, I just need it to be the width of my hand, so that way I can kind of can help roll it up and tighten it up. So this piece is unnecessary, so I just cut the make this uh, want this line right here, so I know where to cut it. So here I've just rolled down the side, and one thing that I thought might be a problem is that since it isn't actually attached from here on down, that cold breezes could come in through that way. Uh, but I don't want to attach it here because then I won't be able to roll it up. So I think probably what I'll do is see if I can just hold it down, like have it kind of nice and tight like that, and then put a sandbag right there. There could still be some air coming in through there, but I don't know if it's going to be that big of a deal. If it is, I'll figure some other way, but I think this is good enough for now. So I'll just have those on the corners for when I'm keeping the, uh, the side wall rolled down. So right now I'm working on cleaning up the door area. I just added this strip of one by two. Before it was just kind of open like that. I have it like this and then I'll trim down this piece so it's nice and clean. So here's a nice tidy door frame. I just added these one by twos along the edges and I have kind of folded the plastic in underneath on this side where it come out on this side and I just cut it flush with the end right here. So now I have a nice clean door frame ready to hang the door. So right here I'm doing a very basic simple door frame and the way I like to make sure that it's square is to measure diagonally along both sides and make sure the number is exactly the same. Uh, I do that by just putting one screw in each corner so that way I can kind of adjust it until I've got it square perfectly and then put another screw right next to it to kind of lock it in place. So I was getting all caught up in the project and I forgot to record the process, but here I'll just take a moment right here to show what I've done. Uh, the way I like to install doors is to put something underneath it just to give it, um, just to kind of hold it up just a little bit, either a piece of cardboard or some wooden shims. And while it's being held there, sometimes I'll hold it there with tape or have somebody else hold it if I have a helper. And then I install the hinges. For here, it's just two hinges. So that way, once I remove this, it'll be just that perfect little distance um, above the door frame. So now it can open easily. And one little tip is anytime you're making a door and you want to strengthen it with this kind of a cross bracing, whichever side uh, has the cross bracing on the bottom, that's the side that the hinges should be on. So next up, I'll put a latch on. Or no, probably next up, I'll put the plastic on and then I'll put a latch on. So here I've just added the plastic to the door uh, by just kind of draping the plastic over, putting this top piece on. And I stretch the plastic and add the bottom piece. And I stretch it on the sides and add these edge pieces and then trim it down along the edges, just like that. And I also added this as an interior door jam so that way when the door closes, it hits that. So I actually just moved this piece over a little bit. It used to be right there and I moved it right there. So that way I would have enough room to be able to add the 
this little door latch thingy. So I was going to install that cool latch, but I dropped the spring that's inside of it on the ground, and I just could not find it for the life of me. I was looking around on my hands and knees for a good couple minutes, so maybe I can order online another replacement spring, but until then I'm just going to do one of these simple latches. And done. I'm going to call that a day. Here's a nice shot of what it looks like on the inside. All right, that's it. I'm pretty much going to call it done. Now, I would still like to do some upgrades, like adding a back window, adding some kind of a heat source, maybe. Maybe even eventually adding another layer and making it like a double layer insulated version. But for now, at least in this in this incarnation, I'm going to call it done.